people that look like us, that have, we share the same story, we see, share the same uh, environments, and we see women stepping out and doing these things. It, it, can be, it can be a source of inspiration. And so, you know, when I got your book, it was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my girl. Um, I love meeting with women that are stepping out and doing what they feel they were born to do. And that is my tagline, Isabel. I was born for this. Mm-hmm. And I didn't always say it so boldly. I didn't realize I was a trailblazer. Uh, this year I turned 71, but it was 36 years ago that I stepped onto the speaking platform when it was dominated by white males. You didn't see women, nor did you see women of color talking about empowerment and achieve your goals and and break those habits and overcome procrastination and write your books and speak up in your, um, because of your trauma and learn how to follow your passion. You You didn't see women of color doing that. So I, it took me a while to realize that I was a trailblazer, but you know, when you're doing what you love, you don't think in terms of that. You're just like, I'm just living my best life. I'm just doing what I feel like the spirit, what the creator, what the God in me is, is, is directing me to do. And it is so great to see women waking up and women like you that are saying, I'm going to write my book. I'm going to travel. I'm going to start my business. I'm going to, uh, heal from my past because we become leaders and healers. And when we see women stepping into political positions, this this world needs more women leaders. (laughs) We need more women healers. We need more women educators. We need more women that care about humanity and children and families and telling the truth about history. We need more women to stand up and a lot of them are what we call hidden figures. I don't know if you remember the movie, Hidden Figures. A lot of the sheroes and women that are really um, giants in their field, you know, scientists. Oh my gosh, women that are humble, women that are teaching the children, women who are taking care of the elders, women who are uh, telling their story without apology. We celebrate you today. We celebrate you. We need you to be courageous. And you know, the word courage is synonymous with the word heart. It takes a lot of heart. It does. And when we don't honor our heart, when we don't honor ourselves, we make ourselves sick. Our immune system is compromised. Our joy is lost. And I want to leave a legacy to my son and my grandchildren that this woman was bold, that this woman was no longer a people pleaser, that this woman understood the power that was innate in her. I wasn't taught that. It was through my years of self-discovery. It was through the years of taking off those layers of what society wants and what society expects and what culture taught me and what religion taught me and what history taught me and what history didn't teach me. It's about dismantling and deconstructing all of those things that programmed us as women. And there's so much more work to be done in so many other countries where women are still not seen, not heard, not honored, not respected. And I know that I am blessed to be where I am on this side of the world. I know that I am blessed that I still have possibilities and options. And I want to make sure that when I leave this earth, that I leave empty. Mm. Oh my gosh, those are such beautiful, inspiring words. And people can listen to that and get the joy, get the love, get all the beautiful emotions that you're speaking of. So I have a question. Mm -hmm. You said, you know, like 30, 35 years ago, what, what happened in your life that it turned around and you said, this is what I want to do. What happened? <laughs> uh, there were two things that happened. First of all, and, and my sister, God bless my biological sister, who is like my, um, what do you call it? She's like my recorder. She, she has an amazing memory. And she reminded me that when I was a, in high school that I begged my mother to take me to the house of, of the blind, people that were blind because I had read a book about Albert Schweitzer's life. And I said, oh, this man 
he has compassion. And I didn't know, I didn't know the word compassion at the time, but there was something in me that said, I want to be like that. I want to help people. I want to be an inspiration to people. I don't want to think of just about just myself. And so I begged my mom, I said, mom, could you take me to the, uh, the place here in LA um, where, the, where the blind are? And my sister said, Jewel, when you came home that day, you were hysterical. She said, you were crying. She said, you were so upset because you didn't realize not only were they blind, but they were physically and visibly um, handicapped and challenged. And it was such a contrast to my healthy life. It was such a contrast to my life of independence. Mm -hmm. And it just broke my heart that people, I never, I mean, they were sheltered. You didn't see them. You didn't talk about them. People were, they were hidden. Mm -hmm. And to see the contrast, it just opened up my heart. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until years later that I heard a speaker named Jim Rohn. Oh, yeah. He's now yeah. passed on. Yeah. And a lady named Terry Cole Whitaker in San Diego um, that I began to hear a message of empowerment, that I began to hear a message that was so diametrically opposed to what I was taught in my Episcopalian background, which is a, a watered down version of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And they mostly focused on the power of your thinking. That's all they talked about. What you're thinking, what you you produce, what you're thinking, you attract into your life what you focus on. You're transformed by the renewing of your mind, and I've been hanging on to those words ever since. And so when I saw them talking, it was like, that's it. <laughs> that's what I want to do. I want to have that type of an influence. I want to be that source that somebody can say, oh, she changed the way I'm thinking. Oh my God, I never thought about that. And so. You know, I just started connecting the dots and realizing I have become that person. And it's not like I'm beating my own drum. But again, I had to start noticing my own growth arc. I had to start noticing my waking up. I started mm -hmm. to notice the people's lives that were coming back to me and saying, Jewel, mm -hmm. because of your books, I've written about eight or nine books. Jewel, because of what you said or what you posted, it woke me up. And that is the best paycheck for me, Isabel, when somebody has those aha moments. Mm. That is the best reward because that's what happened to me. So that was a great question because it was a slow stirring of my heart. It was a slow stirring of my purpose that I, as, as the Bible says, stir up the gift, mm -hmm. stir it up. And sometimes it's all stuck in the bottom of the pan and you got to stir it up, you know? And when you stir things up, sometimes it doesn't make people around you happy because they want you to stay at a level of comfort because now they've got a question. Well, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Or who does she think she is? And so I became known as the self-esteem doctor because I realized that we've got to heal our sense of self-worth and our self-esteem. If you're questioning your worth, if you're questioning your purpose, you need some healing. You need to do some self-discovery. You need to read uh, your book and my book. So we need to begin to uh, immerse yourself in the messages that will empower you and wake you up uh, and to stir up your gift. Mm. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Thank you for sharing that. And how I see so clearly, and I see how I see so clearly that uh -huh. it takes something for people to wake up. And it can take this episode right now, this conversation that people say, you know, there's something in me that I need to stir up. There's something in me that I need to push and push until I look at it and I'm aware of it. And then I uh -huh. know it and I'm passionate about it and I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to look for the people that can continue to inspire me. And that is, that's what it's all about. You know, I say yeah. that making a difference, if I'm not making a difference, I am mm. not doing God's work. I have Amen. to, I wake up and it's like, where am I going to make a difference? How am I going to make a difference? With whom am I going to difference with? And <laughs> that's my life. And I love it. You know, I, yeah. I love being able to say that and do that. And I can take my past and look at all the stuff that happened in my past and I and but you know I wouldn't change it all of it because it got me here and it's who I am today and it's like that is my inspiration and I can 
hear that in your in your story also. Well, Isabel, you know, you're pointing out the, the, the flip side of the coin of inspiration. That sometimes many people are inspired because of their pain. Mm -hmm. They're inspired because of what they went through. They're inspired. Like, I don't want to live the life my mother lived. I don't want to live. I don't, I want to survive that rape. I want to survive that poverty. I want to survive that racism. I want to survive being obese and, and unhealthy and having no energy. I want to turn that pain of that divorce, that, that pain of rejection. I want to turn that into a purpose. And so a lot of people are inspired. So many women have come to me that have breast cancer. And they said, you know, if it wasn't for that breast cancer, I would have never woke up and started traveling mm -hmm. and, and getting rid of the clutter and changing who's in my phone book. That breast cancer scared me, inspired me to say, you know what? This life is short. And what am I waiting for? Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's a, it's a very healthy thing when people can turn their pain into a purpose and let it be that wake up call. But then there's some people, because I do a lot of counseling almost every day, one-on-one -on -one counseling through Zoom, especially because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But there's so many people that are stuck in victimization. They're stuck in the past mm -hmm. and they haven't been given the tools to change that mindset. Yes, it happened. I survived it. I am not that person. I cannot afford to hold on to the anger, the rage. I cannot afford to walk around helpless I cannot be, afford to be suicidal and depressed. I must find tools to get out of that state of mind. I must find tools to shift my thinking. And that is a process. Um, we don't judge them. We don't give up on them. But there are too many people I'm finding that feel like a victim. They feel powerless. And yeah. so when you read about courageous women or you see them in a movie. I mean, look at the difference. I mean, when I was raised going, growing up, the, the men were always the hero. The men were the doctors and the teachers and the educators and the business people. Um, now you look at cartoons and you look at TV series and now the woman is working. You know, you've got Dr. McStuffins, you've got women heroes, you've got women in Wakanda that were strong and fearless. You got, Disney has shifted the narrative where women don't have to be married to be happy, uh, where women are not waiting on, uh, they're not sleeping beauty waiting for somebody to kiss them to wake them up. They're not <laughs> Rapunzel stuck, stuck up in a tower waiting for somebody to save them. The, the stories have shifted and thank God they are. And it's not to dismiss men, but it's to say, we've got to strive for equality. We've got to strive to, to give women and little girls mm. different options. You don't, you don't have to be married. Mm. You don't have to go to college. Mm. You don't have to stay in that state. You don't have to be depressed. You see, my mother passed when I was, I, I was like, my mother passed when she was like 58. I was so enmeshed in my mother. She was my hero. She was everything to me. That when I became 58, Isabel, there was a deep, deep subconscious expectation that I'm probably going to die at that age. Mm. And that year, I went to emergency room three times. And each time there was nothing wrong with me. And all of a sudden, I had a revelation. Jewel, stop it. Stop it. That is not honoring your mother and there is power in your thinking and there's mind over matter. My mind had to say, we're not going to go down that road. You do not have to die because that's the age she died. But it's amazing how things can happen to us and put us into this mindset that that's the way it's going to be. Oh, because mommy was unhappy or because there was a divorce or because there was addiction, because um, there were multiple uh, uh, births without a father in the life, that, that's going to be your story. It doesn't have to be. You don't have to be ashamed of it, but you don't have to repeat it. You can break the cycle. Oh, there, no, there was poverty. So you know what? Struggle is honorable. No, it's not. No, mm -hmm. it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. We can break that. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, Uncle So-and-so was drunk and, you know, um, so-and-so had mental illness. We never talked about it. So maybe I'm having the same thing. We, we've got information. Now. We live in an information age. We live in a time 
when there's information, there's tools available so that we can be transformed by information mm. and inspiration and innovation. Mm. Those are the things that change the trajectory of your life is getting empowered. Once you know what you know, you're responsible for what you know. And you know, Isabel, sometimes I say, "Woo, I know too much. And sometimes I wish I didn't know what I know because I can't unknow it. I can't unknow it. I can't blame my husband. I can't blame my parents. I can't blame white people. I can't blame the friend that 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 betrayed me. I can't blame anybody. I, I wish, you know, it used to be very comfortable to think that I could blame people. I could blame the government. I could blame so many people. But when I started getting empowered and understanding the power of the mind, the power of healing, the power of meditation, the power of music, the power of nature, the power of truth telling. Once I became aware of those things, I couldn't unknow it. Mm. I had to be accountable. Mm. Oh, beautiful, beautiful self awareness. You know, to yes, really that's be it. Aware self awareness. Of yourself. Yeah, exactly. And and all of it from the mental, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual, to really yes. know ourselves. And, yes. and like I, in, in my book, I have all these questions on self-awareness that people can actually right. go through it and really discover, make self-discovery, know yourself. Know yourself mm -hmm. is uh, a key to transformation. If you can't know yourself, you're not going to change. It's good. You're going to stay how you are. So the, everything that you're saying, oh my gosh, I want my listeners to really, really take this in because this is profound. This is something that could really, like you say, change the trajectory of your life. You could go on a master festo, I call master festo journey. Yes, yes. Mastering with joy. <laughs> Thank you. So now, I want your listeners to be aware. I want them to be gentle with themselves mm -hmm. because don't look at a jewel diamond Taylor Isabel and think we just magically got here. <laughs> Our parents, my mother, her mother, her mother, they didn't have the luxury that we have for self-discovery. They didn't have the tools that we have. So it's, it's going to be a process. Trust the process. Don't think, you know, if someone says, you know, I got to lose a hundred pounds for the wedding. And then they're just, they're, upset <laughs> it, it, you didn't get it in a couple of weeks it was over time and so to break out of a relationship where someone is narcissistic or to break out of a, a mindset of poverty or to break out of a mindset of self-hate and self-harm or limitation it's mm -hmm. going to take time mm -hmm. you got to make that investment in yourself because maybe you didn't have a model in your family to show you how to do it. My mother didn't know how to do it. And this is why I created my ministry of women. Um, we are a tribe uh, of women where we open it for anybody, any woman, any demographic, it doesn't matter. But we are women that are dedicated to seeking those tools to break those generational limitations, those generational uh, wounds and hurt and, and cycles that need to be broken and be gentle with yourself. I remember coaching someone and I had a list of questions just like you do, Isabel. And I went down the list and all of a sudden she said, stop, 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 stop. I can't take anymore. And I realized I was moving too fast because it was stirring up a lot of memories of trauma, a lot of memories of shame. And I had to honor that. She says, no, I can't do it anymore. I need to stop. And I've had clients who say, Jewel, I really can't continue with you because it's so painful to realize how much of my time I've wasted. It's so painful to realize how many choices I've made that have put me in a situation, a predicament. It's too painful to remember the people that hurt me. Mm -hmm. And so I would say to your listeners, be gentle with yourself. As you begin the self-discovery, it's going to stir up not only the gift, but it can stir up grief. It can stir up emotions that you have suppressed. Mm -hmm. And you thought it was over, but it's right there. So this is, this is a gift that was given to me 
is to be able to, and I learned so much from my clients. I learned so much not to give, not to, you know, feed them, feed them, feed them, feed them. You know, as mothers, we want to, are you hungry? Here, here, here's some food. It's like, no, <laughs> <laughs> baby spoon feed them because it could be very jarring. Yes. Yes. To realize how much has been lost. And so what my focus is, is not focus on that, but focus on what do we want to create for the future? What do we want to manifest? Yes. That's why I love the title of your book. What Make that a part of your vocabulary. What do you want to manifest? Mm -hmm. What do you want to create? Mm -hmm. And if we focus on that, we can start creating a momentum so that you can start feeling good about yourself and you can start feeling like, whoo, this is this is happening and and it becomes addictive that's a good addiction when you're addicted to positive habits that are producing results and relief perfect perfect i love that about the process you know it is a process and i always say it's a journey it's not a, there's no real destination it's a journey no. and it's always a journey you're not going to end up and like okay i'm done <laughs> Yeah, it's no. always a process, and you you may you may have you may have tackled something and had a roadblock, and you went through it and you handled it, but you're still going, you're still learning, mm -hmm. you know, uh, forever and ever. And as but it's, 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 it's eternal, from the womb to the tomb, uh -huh. we're yeah. never gonna we're never gonna get it all right. right. There is no perfection, mm -hmm. but there is a perfecting of. Mm -hmm the tools as a perfecting of the way we do things, but we're never going to be perfect, you know, and this is, and this is what's so uh, harmful with social media that too many women compare themselves to what they're seeing. You know what I mean? Like I didn't wake up looking like this. You would not want to see how I look in the morning. Okay. But so don't say, Oh, or, or don't say, Oh, she did nine books. I wanted to, it took me years to finally, write books because I was so afraid of what people were going to say. Like, I am not a prolific Maya Angelou, but I knew <laughs> I needed to tell my story and do it in my style. And so we, we have to stop second guessing ourselves and putting the foot on the brakes and waiting until everything's perfect. It's never going to be perfect. <laughs> it never is. You're not going to be a perfect parent. You're not going to be a perfect wife. You're not going to be perfect in your career and your ministry. Uh, give yourself some grace. Give yourself yeah. some grace. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, that you have uh, an a tribe that empowers women. What? Yeah. How does, do, do you join this? How do you join this? What do you do? Okay. We are we are a five hundred one c three. We are officially the Women on the Grow. Women on the Grow dot org is our website, mm -hmm. and we have two missions. On one mission, it is to be an outreach to women that are dealing with hardships. So we have women that give monthly and we have women that maybe every once in a while, but they're saying, we want to be a part of this movement where we send dollars. We send my books. I offer free coaching for women going through breast cancer, depression. There is a rampage of women that are exhausted from caregiving that I'm dealing with. Women that are having issues with relationships, overcoming drama, they're homeless. Uh, they're jobless, uh, they're having parenting issues. And so uh, we're able to respond to those issues by offering funds. Uh, they've lost a loved one. We send flowers or we help with the expenses. Uh, during uh, the pandemic, we were sending food. So that is the, so that's why we are 501c3 so that people that are giving it's tax deductible. Right. The other side of it is that we, I create programs. I create classes. I create retreats. I've been doing retreats for 35 years every year. Wow. Um, and so we've done them in Hawaii, San Diego. We do one every year in Malibu. I do uh, training. I have a session on Zoom every Sunday for the past two years. It's called the Inner Innerversity. And so we offer these sessions and programs to to talk about the things that you and I are talking about today, Isabel, because it takes continuous learning to finally deconstruct what you thought was the truth, to deconstruct those habits, to deconstruct that subconscious mind that says, no, we're broke. No, we're ugly. No, we're poor. No, we can't do it. 
it takes time to deconstruct that and create a new mindset. So I'm doing that every Sunday, three o'clock Pacific time, six o'clock Eastern time. Um, I have a program called I See You, which is a play on words. Uh, in the medical industry, that means intensive care. Well, since I'm the self-esteem doctor, I do I See You, which means I see you. And I do this for women that are stressed out, women that are caregivers, women that need a safe place to just like exhale. So I create different programs. I'm doing one um, March the 19th. And I would love for you to come, Isabel, and be a part of it. I would love for them to know about your book and hear your story, but we're doing it in Encino, California. It is called You Goal Girl. You goal <laughs> girl, it. and that is part two. And so that's where I'm teaching women how to manifest, how to, to create what they want, how to, you know, I've been teaching vision boards mm -hmm. since the eighties. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's nothing new under the sun, but because of social media, it, this idea just exploded as if it was something new. But those, my peers, we've been teaching this, you know, for a long time. So this is what we're doing on March the 19th. So that's what our tribe is all about. We travel together. We have classes together. We reach out to women that are going through challenges. Um, it, we, don't, we don't keep roll. We don't have to, you don't have to give your blood. This is just Come when you can, participate when you can, give when you can, give what you can, know that you're part of a movement that is dedicated to empowering mm -hmm. women, whether it's empowering yourself or empowering other women that mm -hmm. have some adversity in their life and they just need a handout. They need help. They need to be encouraged. They need tools and, mm -hmm. and they, they need to feel connected. They need to feel seen. They need to feel like they're important. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we write... $500 check, a $300 check, we'll send flowers, we'll send books. I'll tell women, you know, if you can't, um, if it's not in your budget to get counseling and coaching, no worries. We have what we call sister sowers. They mm -hmm. sow into this ministry. They sow into this 501c3 and their dollars are tax deductible. And it gives them us, these are women that have compassion. You see, like attracts like. Mm -hmm. So I'm attracting women that are saying, you know, wow, I just wish I could do something for that sister who has breast cancer. I wish I could do something for that grandmother that's now raising her grandchildren because her son died. We had a situation where I met a lady and um, her son died. He either, he either had five, six or seven. It was a lot of children. Wow. Now she's raising all of them and they're all boys. Uh, well, so we sent her money. Um, we, you know, there are women that um, are exhausted and caregiving and, you know, they just need a break. Come on to the retreat. Don't worry about it. Don't, we got you. Oh, that's beautiful. There are women that never had a chance to go to a retreat. Mm -hmm. We just recently experienced the loss of one of our tribe sisters that known me for 35 years. She knew me when I first started mm -hmm. and she went to my retreat for the first time last year. And wow. she was so happy. And she said, Jewel, she's been raising her adult son who is severely autistic. And she was concerned about knowing that she was dealing with lung cancer and she just passed last week. Mm. Think about it. She got to go to the retreat. Wow. She got to experience the ocean and, and the fun and the sisterhood. <laughs> It's like God knew she needed that yeah. because she was she was coming to the end of this journey. And it just took the wind out of me, Isabel. Wow. And then I said, thank you, Lord, that you've used me to create experiences wow. where women can come and exhale. Wow. Joe, that's so beautiful. We're coming to an end. Um, so what, what do you want to say? to everyone, to the listeners, what do, you, what do you want to say to them? Like the last words that they can just think about and dwell on and just bask in that kind of glory. <laughs> I would say, if you heard something today from me or Isabel, write it down and just feed on it, focus on it. We said a lot today. Maybe you heard something, you said, oh my God, 
maybe you heard something, you're like, oh, you had an aha moment. Whatever that was, whatever that statement that you heard, don't try to remember everything. Don't try to do it all. Just find that one thing. I have a saying in my book, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. Amazing. So what is the main thing that you heard today? I want you to write it down because something happens when you think and ink. There's something that scientists say that happens when we write things down and we're getting out of that because of technology. But there's something about writing things down, keeping it in sight, because if it's out of sight, it's out of your mind. And just focus on that, meditate on that and see how it lands and see how it's affecting your behavior and see if it can help you to turn on a light. Because my closing statement always is stay in the light. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Jewel. I love you and looking forward to seeing more of you and doing yes. all these wonderful, wonderful projects with you. Thank you. I love you. I Have look a great forward day. to you. I love you too. God bless you. God Stay bless in the light. You. Yes.